The initiative process, where citizens can propose and enact laws directly, dates back to the early 1900s and the populist movement, which wanted to check on the influence of large corporations in the state legislature. Well, Washington passed its uh, constitutional amendment in 1912 to give the people the power of initiative and referendum. And it was part of a national movement, really a, a Western U.S. movement uh, out of the progressive movement to give people control of, of government uh, more so than they already had. Uh, we were one of the first, but not the first. And uh, it was designed to fight what they considered to be corrupt legislatures that were dominated by special interests. At that time, the big special interest was the railroad. Now, the history of the initiative power actually traces back to ancient Greece, where Sparta and the early uh, Greek and Roman republics used a, a, a process similar to the initiative and referendum process to, to bring people in to propose legislation to, uh, to check the legislature's uh, exercise of the power. And uh, that was picked up uh, in the United States in the late 1800s and early 1900s in the, in the populist movement. So you know, we're almost 100 years into using this, and it has been a tool that groups Groups who maybe don't have a well-established presence in the legislature have been able to use to change policy, to change laws, and maybe the biggest, some of the biggest enduring impacts we've had of the initiative process have been changing how government, attempts to change how government works in terms of how they can spend money, tax, how elections are conducted, how campaign finance rules will be implemented. From those beginnings, the people have used the initiative power to address a wide range of issues from major changes in the way government is run to the type of spread you put on your toast in the morning. To me, the biggest piece of legislation that was passed by initiative was the Public Disclosure Act. And this is 1970s. Uh, this was kind of a new idea that legislators would have to tell you what their finances were. And it was a new idea that they would have to tell you who gave the money for their campaigns, how much they gave, how it was spent. And that was nothing that legislators themselves were interested in doing. Uh, without the initiative at that time, that piece of legislation would never have passed. One initiative that I think tells the story as, as well as any other was known as the Olio Initiative, and it passed in 1952. And to tell you what was going on in 1952, the dairy interests in the state, a lot of dairy farmers and small farms and cooperatives, really had their way with the legislature when it came to issues like, can I make margarine? and can I sell margarine in a way that competes with butter? And so state law required that margarine be sold white with a yellow spot in the middle. And the homemaker would have to knead the yellow spot into this white, nasty looking stuff to make it into margarine. And Slim Rasmussen and his wife Eleanor in Tacoma decided to run an initiative to change that law and allow people to buy margarine that is already yellow. It seems like a silly thing, but it really speaks to the fact that at that point, a special interest would have prevented that simple legislation from passing. Thinking of a topic for an initiative is easy, but actually qualifying one for the ballot is difficult. Proponents first must draft a proposed initiative and file it with the Secretary of State's office. After a ballot title is issued, they then circulate petitions and collect signatures from voters. To make the ballot, proponents must collect signatures equal to at least 8% of the turnout at the last gubernatorial election, currently nearly 225,000 signatures. Signatures must be turned in in early July, four months before the general election. Once signatures are collected and filed with the Secretary of State, they are checked against voter registration records. If enough signatures are submitted, a random sample is checked. If enough signatures are valid, the measure proceeds to the ballot. In recent years, a number of initiatives have passed at the ballot box, but have been invalidated by the courts for violating constitutional provisions. Even so, observers say initiatives provide lawmakers with a real-time barometer of what the public is thinking. One of the real problems with initiatives is that Many of them, probably a majority of them, are badly drafted, uh, just technically badly drafted. 
so that they tend to have more constitutional defects than legislation that's worked its way through the legislative process with very skilled legal staff at the legislature trying to spot uh, potential problems and getting them fixed. I think the number of initiatives on the ballot in any given year is a good barometer of what's going on in the body politic. If there's a period where there's a lot of angst, there's a lot of upset, um, usually related to the economy, then you're going to have more initiatives because people are sort of looking for solutions that they don't feel they're getting from elected officials. At the end of the day, I think uh, the, the fact that the people have spoken, that they've been engaged, that they have, they have uh, said this is an important issue, that sends a mes message. Regardless if the initiative is legally flawed, I think that message hopefully is heard by the uh, legislature and they oftentimes do act. We have pretty good evidence, I think, looking across the 50 states, that states with the direct democracy initiative Public policy looks more like what voters want. If you survey them and you know, measure what they really want in the initiative state, they're more likely to, you'll see that what the legislature is doing looks more like what voters want. That could also be a con. It could be, you know, voters want a lot of spending and they don't want to pay for it. So if that's what they're wanting and, and getting it through the initiative process, then it makes budgeting quite difficult. Sometimes initiatives have caused headaches for lawmakers by limiting their options or by adopting contradictory positions. As a result, in recent years, numerous reforms have been proposed for the process. None have passed, but the debate over how much direct democracy is wise is sure to continue, as it has for hundreds of years. My proposal would be that any initiative that cuts taxes has to indicate, at least by broad, in broad program areas, which programs are to be cut by the legislature. And any initiative that installs a new program has to identify a funding source for it. I think this would make initiatives quite a bit more responsible. The more, they, the, more the, the power is, is, is difficult, the more difficult it is to exercise that the right, the more it gravitates to the paid professionals and away from the grassroots, which is ideally the, the, the impetus for the power. If you're going to make changes to the initiative process in Washington State, you need to act as though you're making it better. Whether those bills were going to make it better or not is subject to debate. But you cannot run a change to the initiative in which you pronounce that you are restricting a right of the people because you'll have your head handed to you politically. There were the debates between uh, Andrew Jackson, uh, who was very small d democratic and populist in a way, and John Quincy Adams who was concerned about stability and property rights and business and so on. Uh, and this has been going back and forth for years. Some people love the initiative process, some people can't stand the initiative process. Um, the legislature who has to kind of pick up the pieces every time the voters say, hey, we want this and we don't want that, um, are occasionally motivated to try to reform the process. I think in most sessions somebody introduces a bill saying just get rid of it, the process. This is not going to happen. For more on initiatives, and for more episodes of How Does It Work? A Washington Citizen's Guide to Democracy, visit tvw.org.